Hi, Brie Weisert here from thefeatherbrain.com and I want to talk to you today about chicken coop ventilation and specifically about why vents need to be well above your chicken's heads. So I got an email on this question recently from one of my blog readers, Dana. Hello, Dana. And Dana wrote to me, I have a question. A lot of the articles I read say that the ventilation needs to be above the chicken's heads. What if it's below them? I have louvered exhaust vents that are well beneath their perches. I can open or close them, but I'm curious why they must be above them versus below them. And then Dana says, in my vision, the vents are low so that any gases from the ground will escape below them. And the small vents I have above them can circulate air. The breezier vents being below them so the chickens are not in the draft. Okay, let's talk about this. First of all, Dana, you are not alone. Chicken coop ventilation is a really confusing topic, especially for beginners. I had a really hard time with it when I first started out with chickens, and it seriously took me about four different chicken coops before I figured out how to get it right. And it wasn't for lack of trying, that's just how confusing all of the ventilation information is out there. So Dana, while your vision sounds good that the draft will just remain underneath your chickens, that's not actually how it's going to work. Because the way it works has to do with air pressure differences on either side of your coop. That's actually what's controlling those drafts. So let's take a look at how that actually works. So we are going to imagine that this box is a chicken coop. And you can see on this side here, I've got a vent up top, a vent below, and then the nice roosting bar with a chicken on it. And I've got the same setup over here, a vent up top. Oh, I guess that one goes that way. A vent below and this nice little chicken on the roosting bar. So vents below the chicken, vents above the chicken. So if the air is flowing this way, you end up with positive pressure on this side of the coop because it's blocking that flow of the air. And then you end up with negative pressure on this side of the coop because the air is not able to push through. So you can think of it that way that, and that's how it works completely if all of the vents are closed. And so now if we open the vents, so we've got the two vents on the, oops, I keep forgetting, I cut that one different. The two vents that are above the roosting bar, and then we've got the two vents that are below the roosting bar. So if we open those, now you have the air movement is going this way, but now because of this positive pressure over here and this negative pressure over here, that causes the air to push through the coop into this negative pressure area. And it's because of those pressure differences that are driving the airflow. That's why you can feel like it's draftier in the coop than it is outside the coop. It's because that air is actually being pushed through from a positive pressure side, pushed all the way through and out into the negative pressure side. So in Dana's visions, she has vents down here and she has vents up here, just like I've done in this model. Um, so she's thinking that if you just open the bottom vents, then the air should just go straight through this vent and straight out of this other vent. The problem is that it doesn't work that way because there's negative pressure all on this side of the coop. And so the air, even from this lower vent, some of it will come out of this lower vent, but you're going to have potentially a lot of it coming out of this upper vent too. So you have the, the air that's coming through that lower vent and it's going up over your chickens. And that's why you can still get really bad drafts in a coop that has this kind of setup with vents both underneath and above. So what does that mean for you and your chicken coop? What it means is that you wanna open all of the vents that you can when the weather is hot. Any kind of drafts that come across your chickens in the heat will be welcome. They will help them cool down, and that's a very good thing. However, in the winter, you obviously don't want those drafts. Your chickens could freeze to death in some scenarios if they have drafts. So you'll definitely want to close those lower vents and leave the ones open that are well above their heads. So I hope that answers all your questions about why you need ventilation well above your chickens' heads. If it doesn't, please ask questions in the comments below. And before I go, there are just a couple more tips I wanna give here on this topic. The first one is, if you need to add ventilation to your chicken coop that's above your chicken's heads, be sure to check out my article on this topic. I give you 21 different ways that you can add ventilation to your coop. 
The second thing is, is if you want to get away with having less ventilation in your coop, then you definitely want to consider using sand bedding. So the reason for that is because sand is inorganic, it just doesn't support the pathogen growth that you get in all the other bedding types like wood shavings, uh, straw, anything else you might use. All of those organic better beddings really support a lot of pathogen growth. So you could just get moisture, you get gases and all these things. You need a lot of ventilation to help move that out of the coop. But with sand bedding, you just don't have those kind of problems. The other thing about sand is that it dries out the chicken poop really quickly. So you just don't get the moisture in your, your coop that you do with organic beddings. Uh, so if your coop is maybe smaller or harder to ventilate, then you really consider using sand bedding. Sorry, the wind scared the chicks. <laughs> um, and I haven't done a video on using sand bedding in the coop. If you guys want to know more about that, let me know in the comments below and I'll put a video together. But I did just do one on using sand in the run and I do use the same sand in my coops as I use in my runs. So be sure to check that out if you want to see what kind of sand to use and learn a little bit more about that. Happy chickening!